Thank you so much, Pedro. And hello, everybody, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depends on where you are. So, so once again, uh, thanks for joining hands-on practice for controlling Kubernetes native application with the service mesh. So we're gonna do that uh, is next uh, almost two and a half hours, and then it will be should be fun. So let me get starting. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen first. That is your most hardest part on the virtual platform. Go for it. So about me, so I'm uh, of course working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major slash developer advocate, a specialized cloud neighbor runtime, for example, Spring Boot, Porkers, Node.js, et cetera. And also I spend a lot of time to build and integrate uh, cloud neighbor application with serverless and service mesh practice. And I'm also responsible for CNC ambassador, uh, give some uh, chance to a lot of SRE, DevOps engineer, and even enterprise Java developer on how to build cloud native application architecture with across cloud native platforms such as Kubernetes and then even public cloud and a uh, private cloud for hybrid multi, multi cloud uh, cloud strategy. So here's a, uh, a few contact information. You can reach out to me uh, just in case. Uh, you can follow my Twitter and then my D repository and also here's a pending URL, uh, my YouTube channel. I already pushed it more than 150, uh, uh, something like the technical video and uh, demo and stuff. Okay, so here's a, our two sub service match champions, Simon and Stelios. So I'm gonna hand it over to Simon and uh, talk about uh, Simon and uh, yourself and then uh, just give it away, uh, take it away. Yeah, hi, how are you doing everyone? Uh, great to be here. This is my first Istio con, so super excited to be part of it. And um, yeah, thanks for the introduction there, Daniel. So um, yeah, like I say, uh, my background, um, so Simon Seagrave, despite the accent, I'm actually based out of Massachusetts uh, here in uh, wonderful New England in the US. Um, I'm the principal product marketing manager for uh, Red Hat OpenShift, um, particularly um, in the areas of service mesh and serverless as well. Um, I'm also uh, primarily focused on various workloads that run on OpenShift as well. So very much Kubernetes focused. Um, so yeah, super excited to be here. Um, Daniel mentioned his uh, YouTube channel there. I mean, I'll, I'm gonna do a uh, unashamed plug here. If you haven't seen it already, check it out. He's got some great videos on there. Um, I haven't put my Twitter handle on there, but I'd love to hear from you all. Um, I'll drop it in the Slack channel there. And um, yeah, whenever we have been the um, marketing, uh, product marketing manager, any, any new content, eBooks that we have come out, I will generally promote um, on, on my social channels as well. So uh, uh, give me a follow, I'll follow you right back there. And um, like I say, all, all the good new content that we have coming out, I will publish uh, via there as well. So uh, nice to meet you all. And uh, at this point, I'll hand across to Stelios. Thank you, Simon. Um, Hi, everybody. Uh, I also want to extend the warm welcome to everybody that is here in our session today. Uh, my name is Stelis Kusuris, and I'm the delivery consulting architect uh, based out of EMEA. My background is in application development, um, and I support customers um, and uh, the field to build solutions uh, on top of Kubernetes and OpenShift clusters, um, or to transfer their existing legacy solutions on top of the OpenShift cluster. And in the past uh, year or two, I have also been expanding my uh, portfolio around uh, cloud services, uh, such as serverless and service mesh, trying to uh, identify the best way that uh, this can be used in uh, delivering uh, new solutions on top of uh, Kubernetes clusters. And that's uh, me, and I will be supporting Daniel in this uh, workshop today. Yeah, thank you, Sa Simon and Stelio, so awesome. So just a quick, uh... The Simon, Stelios, and myself, we're gonna keep uh, addressing your question and answer during the workshop. And so feel free to ask anything around the workshop environment as well as like a service mesh and uh, some of the product uh, on Red Hat technology. Feel free to do that. Okay, so let's move on. So before we getting started uh, our hands-on experience, so let me bring a uh, little bit quick about uh, serverless thing. So why we need to think about server, uh, service mesh at this moment as a res, and then uh, uh, what is the matter actually service mesh on your Microsoft application architecture and development? People say Microservice was born back in 2013 uh, from Netflix OSS stuff uh, with the Spring Boot, which is also born uh, back in 2014. So at a time, 
So people say uh, microservice may be standalone and then just a single business requirement and running on independent runtime like a Spring Boot, that's it. But in the reality, in a production environment, microservice is not just a single application. As you can see, so left side, this is just a monolithic application, the multiple module, like, our, uh, like inventory services, order services, or purchase services. A lot of business services are packaged inside the one single uh, giant application artifact, like a job file, like a work file or ER file, something like that. And then we can uh, spread it into multiple microservices and each microservice is actually have to communicate among the other applications, just like, uh, so we can say more technically, this three microservice architecture. And then there are one big mistake, misunderstanding or assumption wrong thing uh, about discipline computing. This is a, something like a fan of a discipline computing when we adopt this technology a decade ago. So networking already reliable, there's no latency and the, Bandwidth is infinite, so you can actually sending and then incoming and like processing anything you want. And the networking always is secure and then technology, once you decide, never ever change it at all. But this is all kind of stuff, just fantasy. Not gonna happen in reality. It's this fantasy actually impact to our microservice architecture and application topology as well. As you can see, so for example, there are some of Twitter and Netflix, a lot of the uh, huge network traffic company. There are maybe a hundred K or even million application based on microservice architecture deployed in a, across data center and across cloud. And then with that uh, topology and the microservice architecture, you cannot predict failure. So failure can be happening anytime and anywhere. And then, you got some, uh, you, your application topology can be changing anytime, any soon. And then microservice application can be and should be containerized as a Linux container and deploy on uh, your cluster like immutable infrastructure such as Kubernetes. And then this is really hard to deal with this reality with the microservice architecture, specifically distributed uh, topology. So here's a quick example, how to impact when you design and develop your Microsoft application, specifically uh, developer. So for example, this is an online application like a uh, provide a mobile application, like an online shopping mall. And then you can see there are uh, price information and detailed specification information and a catalog item and inventory item. There are a bunch of information actually put together this one single page which means in the behind the scene, there are multiple microservices app actually deployed to the server or cloud platform to render this one image for end user, such as a client. And then here's the more technical behind the scene. So your microservice application actually have chaining uh, communication. So for example, uh, purchase application called to uh, user information, user information actually called to a product page, a product page called to inventory page, something like that. All kind of chaining application uh, topology, something like that. And the Microsoft A called to Microsoft B, Microsoft B calls microservices C, something like, uh, like a chaining uh, your topology. So if you got a failure, one of the Microsoft application, so you can say, oh, we have independent runtime for each microservices, which means if we could have one failure, the other application has any impact. So for example, for back to your mobile app, okay, we, I can still see my information, my user information and the product information, but I can only, see, I cannot only see inventory number of the items. So maybe that's not a huge impact for me at the end, but that's not true because it, most likely, if you got some failure, one of your Microsoft's application in the chaining, so it will cause cascading failure. So because first Microsoft's application, if they have a no get response from the other Microsoft's application, maybe, the, the other, the first application will return whole kind of failure, which means 
it will cause the you know, whole system failure in the end. So what is the, how to deal with that kind of uh, challenge uh, when you build microservice architecture? Here's a quick practice uh, how to solve that kind of problems. For example, circuit breaking and uh, bulk heady, and uh, you're gonna set up like timeout and retry. For example, if you try at least three times to access to another Microsoft application, but you gotta no uh, return the code properly, and then maybe you just skip that thing and then uh, just return like a predefined dummy code, uh, not gonna fail entire system. And a service discovery, which means you need to always check the available services rather than uh, static services uh, in a way. And the load balancing, traffic controlling, this is the all kind of stuff you can deal with uh, microservice application uh, failure for cascading. So back in 20, uh, maybe almost decades ago, the Netflix open source uh, project uh, released a lot of great uh, tools uh, for handling this kind of capability. I can say uh, this is a non-functional microservices capabilities. So as you can see, the left boxes, at the bottom of the boxes, you can see actual application logic, which is a really important thing for application developer. In the case, but you can see there are a bunch of stack on top of the application logic, like a tracing, matrix resiliency and load balancing and the service discovery. But in the end, your microservice package all kind of stuff as one services and then just running on JVN. Uh, if you could deploy this Microsoft application Kubernetes like a container, you need to packaging this all kind of stuff as one package. And then you can have uh, for service discovery, like a console, like, uh, the Eureka and the Ribbon client side load balancing. And also you got uh, some uh, histories for your metric or like a Jeep server, Jeepkin server, which means that you are, for example, Java application, you have to add a third party dependency or maybe dependency into your application. In the end, your application artifact like a Java file will be heavier and more big size of the image in deploy Kubernetes. The most important thing is developer always needed to take care of this kind of stuff into application code itself. Add some more line, add, add some more computation, uh, like a YAML file or a property file. So thing is, sometimes this kind of non-functional capability bigger than actual business logic. This is a big problem. And then, but this is a truth of microservice journey at the very beginning, like I can say 1.0. And then there are some new challenges just came out. So that Netflix open source project only handle with Java technology. But when you move to Kubernetes, one of the beauty of the Kubernetes, you can bring any application runtime into Kubernetes. So for example, Java, .NET, Python, Go, and PHP, even JavaScript, because you can build up your enterprise enterprise application stack with a multiple application runtime. For example, JavaScript or front end application, backend Java, or uh, like a like a machine learning based on Python. So this is a more fitable and productive way to build up your technology stack. But with that, Netflix uh, technology and open source project, uh, you cannot do that. And then. So that's why uh, one of the big reasons why service mesh uh, came out. So service mesh, the one good purpose of the service mesh will get rid of the kind of non-functional capability from actual application code. And then the dedicated infrastructure also known as a sidecar in the service mesh technology and will take care of non-functional capability, for example, observation and security and uh, the communication, more uh, mutual communication and then gathering a lot of stuff being in the showcase a, a graphical UI with uh, some nice dashboard. And the, there are multiple open source project to handle service mesh. And then we're, uh, we're gonna use today Istio. So yesterday Istio actually 
dominated to CNCF Foundation as incubating project, which is really good news. And then we're going to use the Istio technology uh, for the today workshop. And then we actually use OpenShift Service Mesh, which is a bit on Istio. And then we add more capability, integrate uh, one of the popular open source project for Jaeger for observation, you know, great dashboard for the Kelly, and then uh, gathering a lot of metrics from Prometheus and then showcase that graphical uh, GUI based on Grafana. So Stelios uh, will showcase a great demo, how to use Kelly, specifically multi mesh stuff. So here's a quick example, how to visualize across the traffic, specifically each microservice based on sidecar and service mesh communication. Uh, you can actually set it up an, an animation feature and you can see actual traffic flow from here, there, like a production page to the reviewer, something like that. I actually captured this screenshot as a part of this workshop. So you can uh, figure out how it works and how to make that happen behind the scene with the Istio technology. So here's a quick background, uh, why we need to think about service mesh and why it came out the service mesh for handling non-functional capability on the microservice application. So today lab, uh, in the next almost two hours, we're gonna go through a uh, run about the open shift service mesh built on STO. And based on, we're gonna deploy multiple microservice application. One is Spring Boot, the other is Quarkus. So Quarkus is a Kubernetes native Java stack. It's the more focused on uh, container strategy and then scalability and then uh, fast start of time. And then you can also have a native executable file like a Go and Node.js, et cetera. And then we're gonna uh, generate and visualize a deep dive metric with the dead deployed application and then we can uh, examine the dashboard metric with the Kelly console. And then there are a few experimental things uh, based on Istio uh, feature like a uh, routing and the uh, create the virtual services and the uh, port injection like a uh, socket breaking. And then in the end, uh, we're gonna add the security capability into service mesh with the integration. So Istio also provide a mutual TLS termination for the security, but also sometimes you need to add a secure feature into your actual application. For example, authentication and authorization to access your RESTful API. So this is the way how to integrate single sign-on. Uh, we're gonna use Red Hat single sign-on based on Keycloak server. And then it also deployed to Kubernetes and then uh, how to communicate service mesh thing for the, your lower base access control. Okay, so here's one simple requirement to access our workshop environments. You're not gonna install any software, any uh, tool in your local machine. Instead, you're gonna use just a web browser to access our workshop environment. So I'm gonna encourage you to use Chrome browser race to is greatest and then Firefox. And I'm not gonna say you, you can use the uh, Internet Explorer or Edge Explorer or something like that. So, and then please turn it off with VPN or like a, a firewall, something like that. We're gonna use a web socket. So sometimes the, your local or office uh, VPN policy or wire policy automatically prohibit the web socket communication. And then you cannot access our uh, code ready workspace, which is the cloud based ID tool. Okay. And if you have any question, uh, for example, cannot access our workshop environment where you got some error during the workshop uh, instruction, just be free ask question into Slack channel. And then we are more than happy to address question uh, by Simon and Stelios and myself. Okay. So Simon and Stelio, if you have a chance to uh, put on the chat, this is Bitly URL. So this is a Bitly URL. Uh, you only need to, uh, only thing you want to use this URL. Bitly is still con 22-sm-lab. So once you click on that, you can find this web page, assign yourself. So let me go through real quick. So, and then once you get, you can, 
you couldn't find this one and I'm going to stop presentation mode and then I'm going to try to go to this URL and now you can see uh, here is the email address any email address but we're not going to validate this email address if this is the actual one so you can actually set it on like a little bit uh, tweak email address and a password already the same thing and you go back to here the red head uh, the S combination uh, uh, if any chance Simon and Stelios are putting the, uh, this password as well just in case and then when you submit and you automatically assign your username for this workshop. For me, as an example, here the user one and the password is already the same. And then here we go. When you click on this lab instruction, it will open new web browser or tab menu. And you can see the application, your instruction here. We're gonna five section, but the first section is just introduction. And the second section is already, I explained is still thing. And then sometimes your user ID may be gone and they just click on that and they keep pin, uh, typing the same username. Once you set it on user ID and it automatically rendering all kind of command line or application source code or YAML file based on your username. And then back to this slide deck and then I'm gonna that. Okay, so I'm gonna show the one more slide. This is a, we're gonna showcase this demo um, I would say uh, after one hour or 15 minutes, Stelio also showcased this multi-mesh demo using Kelly dashboard and how to deploy, how to install uh, based on uh, Travis demo. So stay tuned. And then uh, it will be very interesting to run more advanced uh, service mesh capability. Okay, let me try to uh, go through real quick at the very beginning. Just setting up the code ready workspace, uh, just in case uh, some people don't have any experience to use cloud based IDE rather than local one. So when you go to this one, and then you can find uh, some kind of user setting just in case. And then whenever you got a, some kind of source code or the command line, you just click on that thing and then it automatically paste it into your cache buffer, and then you just paste it into terminal window or ID tool using control V or command line V on the Mac OS. So we're gonna use a few bunch of the technology based on Red Hat thing, Red Hat OpenShift based on Kubernetes. We're gonna use the OpenShift raised version, OpenShift 410, which is built in uh, Kubernetes 1.12.21. And the core radio workspace be on uh, Eclipse chair for cloud-based web ID tool. And then we also using uh, Quarkus, Spring Boot, and the single sign-on. So here are the quick uh, summarize of the, the feature and uh, capability of a service mesh STO. And then just one very important thing for today so you don't need to finish this old kind of workshop uh, in the next two hours because I'm gonna make this uh, cluster available until midnight Eastern time zone, which means that you need to focus on more understanding all kind of context. For example, so cre uh, creating these three services, which means uh, why we needed to create multiple microservices and how to inject sidecar for multiple microservice application and then how to visualize the uh, traffic, uh, traffic between, uh, among the microservice application. And then this all kind of stuff, you need to more spend time, understand the context and the text in the, in the, in the uh, takeaway rather than just copy and paste command line or source code, etc. Okay, so I'm gonna just showcase how to access the core radio space. And then I'm gonna give you some time, like a 20 minute, uh, get your hands dirty on. And then after that, I'm gonna uh, back to the, my screen and I just demonstrate how it works real quick rather than explain every single detail. Okay, so when you click on access code ready workspace instance, it automatically start your own code ready workspace. That's why you have to make sure your user ID is set it up properly. So when you set it up user one, for example, and then you can see user one workspace. 
If you take the user three and you will see user three dash workspace and then click on workspace, it automatically start new workspace. The, the WIM UI is a pretty similar VS code, latest one. And then go back to uh, instruction. And then please be careful, follow the instruction, try to understand what exactly they mean each section. And then we're gonna import and actually clone uh, our workshop repository and then click on registry and then paste it here and then set up register location and uh, uh, reload the repository, uh, make it refresh your workshop environment on your uh, code ready workspaces. And you can see left side explorer, the application already, there are catalog application based on Spring Boot and inventory application based on Quarkus. And the back to the here, we're gonna go to right uh, branch to do that. In a cube box, click on, you can click on new terminal and then paste it here and then change the branch. And now uh, you can go to creating uh, G3 services. Okay, I'm gonna stop to showcase and quick demonstration how to get starting workshop environment. And I'm, I'm gonna give you time. Uh, now it's 2.32 an Eastern time zone. And I'm gonna give you uh, 15 to 20 minutes to go through first the section. And then I'm gonna uh, try to showcase how it works in the first section in the creating this free services. So first section is just deploy a book import application and then just figure it out and try to understand how this application communicate different language and different runtime based on service mesh. Okay, so I'm gonna go to uh, showcase the first step real quick, and then I'm gonna address some of the uh, common question here. So here's my code radio space. I'm gonna try to re in because I tried to log out and log in with a different user. Uh, This is the instruction and this is a code radio space. And then here's the right side of the cube box. And then if you want to open new terminal and just keep clicking on new terminal it automatically click on. And sometimes you got some wrong behavior on code radio workspace, just to reload your web browser, it automatically uh, re refresh your environment. And then click on login, open shift. This is automatically logging up with the cluster. You can see the asterisk means this is the current uh, namespace that you logged in. And then uh, this is just read only. You cannot type in, you cannot uh, paste in any command in here. And just close that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to uh, this first instruction, uh, deploy and creating a distributed Microsoft application. You can see, we have a product page and detailed reviews and rating. If you have some experience to uh, go through Istio service mesh with the example, this is one of the common popular example, book input application. So book input application combines the multiple application runtime. For example, as you can see a product page based on Python and the reviewing page based on Java technology. And then uh, rating is based on Node.js and the detail is a Ruby. And then you can go to open the cluster and then log in with the uh, username password. So the password is always the same. And keep in mind the user username because we have the same password and a different username. So if you uh, try to uh, different username, maybe you can uh, ruin uh, the other 10 days workshop environment. So I'm gonna try to log in myself, user one, and then go to the top of the view. And and then actually there are Istio system 
it's the, it's the namespace where we already deploy all Istio related resources like a, uh, something like a gateway and a Grafana and a Met, uh, Prometheus and a Jaeger and then Kelly as well. So we actually, you could have two choices to stand up Istio service mesh on your Kubernetes names, Kubernetes cluster. You can have a one single uh, Istio system and then like a centralized Istio system and share uh, all your entire cluster, or you can have multi uh, service mesh and then each uh, project or each application, I mean, each user has their own service mesh uh, capability just like this workshop. And then back to go to book info. And there's an empty, uh, there's a resource not found. And you, can, you have to actually uh, keep in mind that your uh, project is always a user, username dash book info. And then uh, just try to uh, create a new service mesh member role, which allows uh, the developer to add the sidecar injection for specific namespace. For example, uh, we're going to uh, have a three different namespace user, the book info catalog inventory uh, for the, this workshop. So we're gonna uh, add the side the car for the service mesh capability in the end. So we're gonna add this member role into service mesh member. And then this is a YAML uh, file. So one of the uh, comparable feature in open the developer console, you could click on uh, open a uh, YAML uh, editor and then paste it and then copy that and then it should be ready to configure. And then now when you deploy new application pod into the members namespace, you can actually add a sidecar, which allows to enable submission capability on your application side. So we're gonna deploy booking for application and gateway and also uh, patch that application uh, based on uh, Istio ingress gateway uh, in order to access that application from external services like client user. So when you go to uh, the browser in a explorer in a core radio space in an Istio folder, you can find the uh, book info, how to define the book info application for the detail and deployment resources and the services and then uh, for another rating, and then you can find the actual application image uh, existing in Quay.io for the, this workshop in the service account, et cetera, and gateway. Also, it allows, uh, you can access that application through bot virtual services here. Specifically, you can define specific URI, like a product page or login logout, and then uh, the AppQN domain, you can actually uh, set it up uh, any domain or a specific domain as well. So let's try to uh, go to terminal and then create a three application and then print the new gateway for the app to access the application also uh, virtual services here. And then lastly, we're gonna add one destination rule. When you go to destination rule, it automatically access to uh, three different review page around the login uh, rules. So there are three is a 33%, 33%, 33%, something like that. And then I'm gonna add like a OC command line label, which is a more fancier, our topology view with uh, distinguish it, which application actually deploy. After that, when you go back to topology view in book info namespace, you can find the uh, graphically uh, deploy the application. You can instantly recognize, oh, product page is based on Python and the detail is a Ruby and the other application Java and Node.js and based on rating. It's a pretty simple and you can uh, recognize what kind of technology you actually um, deploy for the application and each application communicate uh, this kind of connection. And then uh, you can go to ingress URL to access the front application. As you can see, 
uh, the rating is there are three different rating like a red color when you reload that and it should be different thing something like I'm going to reload try to oh I'm going to make sure destination no something like that. maybe I missed that on the application unchange that okay let me try to delete and recreate it okay okay it will take some time some time and then once you uh, deploy the application as you can see uh the version one there's nothing waiting and the version two is just only black color star and the version three is a red color star and when you see the book import application specifically uh, review part and you can see there are two container inside the pod, which means one is actual application container. The other container is a sidecar for managing uh, service mesh capability. So this is a really simple example of how to deploy uh, the multiple Microsoft application with the service mesh uh, enablement uh, uh, with the, uh, this workshop environment uh, using the book import applications. So Daniel, just to round that, round the question, we've had a couple of okay. folks um, uh, mentioning about they're getting an error with the cloning of the uh, repository within GitHub. Um, we had that earlier, someone just, uh, so if anyone's getting that, if you could try it again, let us know in the chat if it persists. Yeah, yeah, so maybe uh, uh, maybe this workshop already created a couple hours ago, actually 12 hours ago, so maybe the core ready workspace maybe already a uh, little bit hibernate in like an idle, like a from scale down to zero. And then when you just uh, try to access the core ready or space, it try to start right away. And it takes some time to set it all kind of networking or uh, resource consumption and limitation, et cetera. And then so it sometimes it takes some time to have a fully functional. So that's why I try to reload and then refresh that browser. It uh, make your code ready workspace totally ready and then try to uh, access the GitHub repository and it, it should be okay. But if you got a still problem, just let me know your username. I'm gonna try to do myself on my side. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna put on the uh, Slack channel as well as our Zoom channel. So when you go to WebSocket test, you know, you can see automatically testing and all set it up is yes. If you got failed one of them, you cannot access the code ready workspace or something wrong with the code ready workspaces because the code ready workspace is basically using WebSocket. So that's why uh, uh, in a, earlier I asked you, you have to turn it off the WebSocket, uh, probably make it some kind of firewall or VPN stuff. Okay, and then just open it and then new terminal. And I'm gonna make sure here, right hand. Okay, so user 35, you should be go ready. And then I'm gonna roll out and then try to 37. Here we go. So this is a maybe one of the benefit uh, when you use the cloud-based ID tool. And then you can actually debugging uh, the different, uh, the other users in a, in a real time. So I'm gonna click on once again, because you maybe see the failure, which means uh, this core ready workspace actually running on pod on Kubernetes. And then sometimes it failed because it's the wrong time hibernate. And then now we're gonna restart, click on once again. And then, okay. And here's a repository back to the here. And then paste here and then set up repository and click on open it. Oh, it's already there. Alrighty. Looks good. Uh, it sometimes takes some time to rendering all GUI thing. 
if you don't have any response, maybe uh, next 20 seconds, and then you can already reload the web browser. Just like I did for user 37. Okay, so all things up. And here we go, new terminal. And then go to check it out, the OCP-410 branch. And then you can log in open shift as well. And then log in user 37. You should be ready to go. All right. Oh, is there any problem user 39? Okay. Interesting. And wait. Uh, and you can see the fail find the target workspace. In that case, just click one time uh, in the user 31 workspace, it automatically restart. So you don't need to keep waiting for that. And then here we go, Vincent. Uh, I cannot open the guide here. What do you mean? So, so if, when you so what do you see when you try to open this URL? You got some four or four error. Ah, can clone it. Uh, so we are so. So anyone have some trouble to, I mean, have some issue to git clone thing? And you, can you go to websocketest.com and try to make sure your websocket is available on your site? So the terminal window in Core Ready Workspace, it actually uh, running on inside the Core Ready Workspace container pod. This is the core ready workspace, also the container. So when you go to open shift, and then let me show you real quick as the cluster admin. So here's the cluster admin. And then each user, they has their own workspace namespace. For example, uh, go to project. And then here is the user one, user one dash check. And then it show own core ready space. You can see this is a part. This is the actual uh, the code ready workspace as a container part. And then that container part uh, show uh, it's a terminal inside. The, uh, it's not actual terminal. Is not container. The whole workspace is a container. All right. So I think some people. Uh, already almost done in the number three, creating display service. Is it any other one uh, have some trouble to go through the creating display service like a boogie for application? So Mikhail, uh, you got a still problem. So what kind of problem you still have for deploying the boogie for application? Or you mean, are you still working on to uh, cannot find OC command. Hmm. Uh, are you user 39, right? So OC command line is already embedded into code radio space here. So this is my code radio space in user one. So it's all same. So. Let me try to log in, user 39. User 39 and try to log in. Where did you try to run the OC command line? Okay. Okay, you should run OC command line in the terminal. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, so uh, we're gonna have a quick demo, Stelio. So you're gonna uh, jump in the demo if you're ready, and then maybe we can give some time, people, uh, just a quick break, and just watch your nice demo next ten minutes. 
And then we're going to go back to uh, next step, the service visualization on monitoring. OK, great. Um, so I'm just going to run through um, how um, we can federate multiple instances of the open service mesh. Um, and I'm going to do this by running two instances of the service mesh on top of um, OpenShift clusters, one running on um, Google Cloud Platform and the other one on AWS. And we will use also the travel demo so that um, we can validate uh, and verify that the federation has happened and we have communication between two different service meshes. Um, this is the example from let's say, the Kiali travel demo, uh, if you've used it before, and then we'll set up a west side and an east side uh, to do that. All these instructions are also on this Keep repository. I think we'll put the link afterwards. And you can do that on your own time, so long as you have two clusters of, um, uh, two opposite clusters, you can do that with the code ready containers, uh, or you can have an opposite cluster 4.6 uh, uh, plus version. And all you need to do is uh, clone this repository, and then to set up the URLs and tokens for these clusters um, and also apply the operators because um, we utilize the open service mess, uh, the open service mess operator to set up the instances of uh, the service mess. Um, you might have seen, uh, or you might uh, see if you look more closely on the workshop later on that you need a service mesh control plane resource and a service member, service mesh member role uh, when you set up a new instance of a service mesh. We will additionally see that we need, for the federation purposes, a service mesh peer resource, which declares the federation uh, between a pair of uh, service mesh instances and an exported and imported service mesh set. And that is basically the services that uh, a service mesh is exposing and another one can actually import. So I've done all this setup on my uh, clusters. So I've got the operators running. What I'm going to do is just run this script and hopefully um, we will set up uh, two namespaces, one on the east side called remote east mesh system, which will hold the east mesh uh, service mesh and one on the west cluster, the remote west mesh system and we'll have the uh, west mesh uh, uh, instance of the service mesh. As I said, we have a SESMES control plane called East Mesh, and additionally, we will add two uh, gateways, the ingress gateway, uh, which will actually allow us, uh, allow the West Mesh to communicate with the, um, with the West side, and the ingress gateway, which will allow the West Mesh to actually come and, and federate with the East Mesh. And uh, we also have the service mesh member role, as I said, uh, in which we will define three namespaces that will be part of the mess. And this will hold the travel demo workloads. And it's necessary to do that because uh, that's how the service mess instance knows how to, where to inject the sidecars uh, proxies on those workloads. Um, now we've done that for the East mess. Now we're doing this for the West mess, the equivalent actions. So again, there's the resource, the service mess control plane, which defines the operator how to deploy the service mess instance. So the West mess, will again have an additional egress gateway, and that is on uh, how it uh, can communicate for federation with the East Mess, and an additional ingress gateway on how it can have communications coming from the East Mess so they can uh, form the federation. There's also this trust domain, the West Mess local, uh, which will be used during the authentication for the federation purpose. On the West cluster, we'll only have a single namespace because on the West side, we will only run um, a sub part of the travel demo. And uh, it's just checking now the service mesh control plane and resource conditions are met. And we will also create the data plane namespace, which will actually hold the uh, federated service. Okay, so when the conditions are also met on this, we will actually uh, start creating the federation because right now we've created the East Mesh and the West Mesh only. So for the purpose of actually creating the federation, we need to do a peering between the two meshes. And for the purpose of doing that, we need to do two things. One is we need to share the Istio CA root certificates so that during the federation, they can um, exchange this and validate each other. 
So we start by ex extracting the one from the East cluster, and we're going to store it on the West cluster under a country mark called East CA root certificate. And we'll do the opposite and by extracting the West MES East CA certificate, root certificate, and we will uh, store it in a country mark on the East cluster under the name West CA root certificate. Course, uh, the second uh, step that we need to do for the for setting up the peering is to get the service uh, load balancing addresses from the AWS and TCP cluster, and uh, because that way during federation they can actually attempt and uh, discover each other. So on the Google Cloud Platform cluster, the IP of the service load balancer is uh, this IP here, and on the east side, which, sorry, on the west side, which is running on top of AWS, the host name of this uh, load balancing address. Services. Now, this is going to be used uh, on setting up this service mesh peer resource I was talking about earlier. Uh, so, we're taking it from the west side, but we're going to set it up on the east side. So, you can see this is the east service mesh uh, namespace. And we're adding this address so we can communicate to the west service mesh. And we're also using the um, root certificate to communicate with that west service mesh. And we're going to import from the West Service Mesh a single service called Discount. And uh, we will use that to identify that remote service and communicate it uh, when the demo is deployed. Now, setting up from the West to the East, the Service Mesh, again, we have another Service Mesh peer uh, for the East Mesh, which is running on top of Google Cloud Platform. And this is the IP, as I said before, and this is the uh, extracted uh, East OCA root certificate for the validation. And this time we're going to use an exported service set, which actually says that I'm going to expose this service uh, from this West Travel Agency. And then it's going to be imported as we saw just slightly above uh, in the East Mess. Okay, so the next step is to verify that the uh, Federation has actually uh, worked. And let's hope that the demo codes are with us on this. And we'll do the same thing from the west to the east cluster, to the west to the east mess. Okay, so with these steps done, we should have the federation working now. Um, and the next thing is to actually deploy applications because we have not deployed any workloads. So on the east cluster, we will deploy the workloads of the travel demo over three namespaces, the east travel agency, the east travel portal, and the east travel control. And you'll see here that we have uh, one service called Discounts, which is a local service on the east side. Um, but we'll also deploy this service on a single namespace on the west side. So this is the West Travel Agency. And so now we've got this as the exported service and also uh, imported on the east side. So the east side will, should see two services, the Discount local service and the Discount remote service. Okay, so if everything has worked, um, we, we should be able to go to the Kiali um, UIs. So as I said before, we have two service messages and so two control namespaces and two Kialis. Uh, so if I go here. Okay, I think I should move this. So this is the uh, Google Cloud uh, Platform Cluster. And this is the opposite, running on top of AWS. This is the East uh, Service Mesh. All right, so we'll give it a few seconds for Kiali to uh, resolve all the setups. Now, what you'll notice is that there is the discount service. This is again the East Mess. Uh, this is a local service. And actually, I should click this, the request distribution. You can see how much of the traffic is being sent to this local one uh, and how much of the traffic is being sent to the remote one. Now, the Kiali will actually remove this, which is unidentified in the beginning. And so you'll notice that uh, when it stops um, using that as a percentage, it should have about 50% going locally and 50% going remotely. 
Another reason behind this is because if we look at this service, this is on the side, and we've got a, a, a traffic management rule which says we should send 50% of the traffic to the imported service from the Westness. And you can see here on the Westness that we are actually are, are receiving traffic. And this is the um, this is the services from the Eastness sending requests to this service on the Westness under the West Travel Agency. So if we change this and we say we want to send 90% of the traffic remotely and 10% locally. Okay, we can again go back to the graph. And as the requests will start to be directed mostly towards the remote one, you can see this is 67, but it will start increasing until it reaches 90% remote requests and only 10% towards the, uh, local, um, the local discount service. So this concludes actually the setup and the demo of uh, how Federation over the uh, over multiple instances of open system service mess works. Um, as I said before, we'll have this link uh, that you can use to set up on your own time in your own clusters this uh, demo. All right, and so let's move on to the next step. Uh, so let me share my screen again. Here we go. Okay, so we already deployed Boogie Boy application. Now we're going to do visualize our service mesh using Kelly, Prometheus, and Grafana. Each tools have a different uh, capability, showcase the graphical uh, metrics or traffic, uh, incoming, outgoing, and a little bit more. So, and then in the end, we're gonna run about how to uh, set it up that uh, tools for the Istio uh, capability uh, using the service, uh, virtual service and A-B testing, one of the, uh, uh, advanced deployment strategy. So first of all, we're gonna make some, uh, generate some application load with the, using uh, like a call command. So go back to terminal window and I try to, oh, it should be something error. Okay, to go to boogie for, okay. So now I'm gonna try to, just, Login. Yeah. I got a back and forth to multiple username space today. So let me try to access book import. The application still working. Yeah. View. Okay, so book import application. Oh. We got an error. So let me try to figure it out first and then just uh, go through uh, the second thing. Uh, so first of all, we're gonna uh, generate the work uh, the application load here, just call command and then go through an explorer and uh, how the Kiali console looks like. And then the Stelios already showcased Kiali thing, but this is more fundamental features in Kiali console. You can see, you can go to service graph and then you can check it out, the tra traffic animation. And then you can see actually the incoming traffic uh, coming from where and then coming uh, going to where. In an application menu, you can find the multiple application already deployed the service mesh inside the car. And then there are, you can find uh, inbound and outbound metrics as well as some, some kind of application workload in a, in a service mesh and uh, in service and in steel computation as well. And in the end, one of the great thing of the Kelly, the, you can already have the district tracing uh, function already integrate into Kelly console. When you click on district tracing menu, it automatically bring up new web browser and then try to access the Jaeger query console which you can also log in with this same username uh, based on single sign-on in OpenShift uh, user account. So this is the way how to access that. Also metrics from Prometheus. And then you can uh, 
query, some, some Istio uh, request query, something like the, uh, the total count of, uh, total number of all requests to product page or the specific version of the review page or the, the time period, like a, you know, last five minutes to all product page service request. And here is the uh, Grafana dashboard. <coughs> Excuse me. So they are already built in service mesh dashboard. As you can see, uh, Istio mesh dashboard and a mixer and the pilot and service and a workload dashboard. You can already, you don't need to create a uh, custom dashboard. You already set it up out of a box and then you can just select and how to the uh, service mesh application uh, have some network traffic and the metrics data from gathering from Prometheus server. So this is the way, and then uh, the last thing is the A-B testing from Istio. So there are one single UI, you can actually log in with a JSON and a password JSON as well. When you log in JSON and you can see only destiny to review V2 version, which is always black star. And then when you log out, it always routing to review version three, which is a red color star. So this is a one of the canary deployment. In that case, you have a still running two different application on the Kubernetes. And some application, some user just routing to into specific services version, like a, here we go, the Ruby 2, and the other one is Ruby 3. So this is one of the advanced way to make your A-B testing on your production environment. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so here's a step two. So I'm gonna give you some moment to go through step three, the last step of this workshop. In the meantime, I'm gonna to try to fix my workshop in uh, my workspace. And then uh, I'm gonna back to right back to and showcase the uh, step two and then step three right away. And then please go ahead your works, workshop uh, space to step two if you uh, still finish it yet. And then uh, if you already finished that step two, which means the service visualization and monitoring, uh, you can go forward to the last section, the advanced service mesh de development. We're gonna use Spring Boot and Forecast application. Okay, so I just redeploy the booking for application. And then uh, back to the here, let's try to uh, make a generation, uh, some of the, my uh, application load and then you can find the 200, which is the uh, proper return, uh, the no errors. And then back to here, let's go to Kelly. And then log in with the open to single sign on with the same name, the user one, my username. And then you can see, I uh, go to graph, and then go to plugin for, and then click on the traffic and animation. And it will showcase the new animation you can see from Istio Ingress, because we're gonna uh, send a message from Ingress, the URL, and then go to Ingress URL, and then and you can see a spray into detail and the reviews and the rating. So, as I mentioned earlier in a slide deck, this is some kind of the chaining Microsoft application. And then you can go through like a application and for example, product page, and then you can find uh, how the topology uh, looks like, and then click on the traffic and the inbound, how to uh, increase your inbound traffic and outbound metrics. And also the trace that thing is automatically showcased to the Jaeger uh, dashboard inside of that. When you click on view the traffic, it actually go to Jaeger dashboard directly and then use the same username 
which is a cool thing. So all the OpenShift user management integrate all kind of access management and role based access control and then click on product page and find the resources you can find this kind of up and then you can break down and uh, more detail the application uh, tracing uh, between microservices, for example, between detail and the reviews. And here is a product page as well. And here's a, uh, how, uh, how long does it take uh, 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 between uh, microservice application communication here. All right, the workload and then click on any page product in the same traffic and there's some kind of logs and the inbound outbound trace and services here. And then you can see if you got some error and then you, you, you know, there's something error here, not healthy. And then Istio compilation, for example, Boogie Boogie Gateway, you can find the YAML file. You can actually find the dead source code in the here, the YAML file in the code radio space as well. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm gonna really uh, go through real quick about each menu and what kind of metrics and information you can find there. And when you go to Prometheus, it's already uh, deployed in the ECO system namespace. And I'm gonna try to go to user one. And then here is the Istio request uh, duration of millisecond, and then execute it. You got a uh, bunch of the metrics and then change the graph, and then maybe uh, change the time period, and then you can, a lot of the metrics here find that. And there are a few more uh, metrics here, something like a product page, and or uh, like a, some of the duration uh, in the last five minute, and you can find some more breakdown, uh, certain metrics and query in the Prometheus. In the last step, you can also uh, go to Grafana to visualize the metrics to which he, uh, coming from Prometheus server. And then when you go to here, manage, and it's already uh, embedded all dashboard, for example, it's still service mesh, you can find all kinds of stuff. And then go to uh, mesh dashboard, and you can find the success rate for each microservice here. So this is just to give it some chance, give you some chance to go through and then what kind of capability you can have uh, to manage and tracing metrics in service mesh based on Microsoft application with the multiple tools, Prometheus, Grafana, and Kelly. Each tool uh, provide a different capability, a little bit different. Maybe some of the uh, graphical gra metrics you can uh, maybe tend to just come from in the Prometheus rather than Kelly. And then the Microsoft application, the topology perspective is a pretty much complicated uh, the relation, just like uh, RDBMS. And then Kelly showcases a really bit fancy UI, how uh, each Microsoft application uh, communicate the other Microsoft application. Uh, and then you can find the traffic animation. It's a really, really easy to understand uh, where the traffic coming in the in the coming to going to where something like that. All right, and here's a more four steps. I try to more spend time to understand each section. So what is the request routing and the, what is the service version, and then what is the main goal of the virtual services? So for example, in the traditional networking uh, stack, you have to physical uh, router or load balancer to uh, handle your network traffic. So Istio also handle that network traffic based on virtual services. And then here is how to create a new virtual services. We're gonna uh, go into all traffic into V1 in a review page. And then to, to create that, back to the terminal window and then keep uh, running the generation, uh, the application load. Let's change that. Uh, I got some error. 
Oh, I'm already existing because I already a uh, quick scenery test with this one. So I'm gonna delete exist one and I create a new one and then I create the virtual service and then go to product page. Previously, you can see uh, the three different review, for example, empty, black star, red star. But now I'm gonna keep reloading this page, but I can only see the empty, which means the all traffic just go to V1. And then when you go to uh, the Grafana console, and then to go to service mesh, dashboard, and service dashboard, and then go to ratings. Here we go. And now the, the other rating is go to uh, go down to zero, no traffic any longer. So it's looking easy. Uh, maybe previously you got uh, some bunch of the APM dashboard to monitor the application like a scalability, reliability, or troubleshooting, and so on. But the microservices in service mesh world, maybe uh, Grafana and a Kiali, one of the default dashboard in the IT ops team or a SRE team keep pull that dashboard into big giant screen and monitor your application uh, has and you know, status in a production environment. And I'm gonna to try to A-B testing, put into that, and then go to broad page and sign in, and JSON, and only the bright colors review and the sign out is only red color. That's why I mentioned earlier. This is the, how to uh, visualize the application. And then uh, each tool showcase different capability for service mesh and the application uh, maintainability. So I got a quick question here. And then destination rule defines the manner client to the host and the service in the mesh. We define the client. To the let me find something. Oh, yeah, it's already answered uh, Stelios. Yeah, thanks for that. All right, and so, so I'm gonna go to last section. We have just a few minutes. So I'm not gonna try to finish that one. So first section, I'm gonna stop this one. So this is a deploy to Microsoft's application into different two namespace. For example, here's a catalog, and then the other one is the inventory. In the end, uh, it will deploy to application. And when you deploy application, this is a just normal application without service mesh. So in order to add sidecar, we're gonna use annotation as an example, sidecar.istio.io slash inject. Uh, colon true. This is the annotation automatically injects sidecar into Microsoft's application. Really cool thing uh, over Istio as a red open ship the service mesh. So we're gonna just using OC command line, patch it, uh, deployment config, uh, which you redeploy this application with the sidecar. In the end, you will see uh, one container, one pod will be changed that the two container is one pod. So that's why 2-2 two two means two container. One is actual application, the other one is sidecar. And then each application not standalone and each application actually uh, connect to database like a PostSQL. So in order to communicate uh, PostSQL pod and an application pod, the PostSQL pod also, uh, we have to enable uh, service mesh. So that's why I print that kind of stuff as well. And then after that, uh, we're gonna uh, create a virtual services to access to uh, catalog application. So here is some relation between catalog and inventory. So catalog page actually uh, retrieve inventory uh, from inventory service. As you can see, I'm gonna make it like a bigger. So here's all uh, information based on PostSQL in uh, catalog application. But the last column, inventory quantity, is came from inventory services. That inventory service actually connect to uh, separate PostSQL database. 
So in order to render this web page, so we can just call ingress gateway and ingress gateway actually call catalog services and the category services uh, call to process database and pull into all kinds of information. And then each information based on item ID uh, connect to inventory uh, services and inventory services based on that item ID uh, it tries to back and separate process database. In the end, you got to get uh, this catalog web page and then all kinds of communication handled by service mesh based on Istio. Okay, so still uh, deploying application. And uh, here's a quick example, inventory application already deployed. This is a Quarkus application. This is a PostSQL. So when you go click on PostSQL, uh, this is a database. And then here's the Quarkus application, click on that. You can find the Quarkus application and then the, some of the uh, data is automatically created. And then back to the another catalog application. And then just the, first of all, deploy the process care first. And then uh, this is still packaging catalog Spring Boot application. And then containerize and push it into integrate container registry. And now you can see the Spring Boot application is just deployed. And then just to make sure Spring is already starting up. Oh, okay, the spring is started up. Back to the application. And then try to find the, the application. You can see just one container. So that's why we're gonna to patch it, the container as uh, enable side the car. And then, and then it, uh, needed to restart the container, putting the one side of the car inside the application pod. So that's why the, you can see the waiting rollout, the actual the application pod. Okay, we got it done. And let's try to another one. And then we're gonna create to, uh, here a catalog item to the dad, here's a catalog item default. And then paste that. And let's try to create that. Once we create uh, the sidecar is enabled. And then uh, we're gonna more the for injection for inventory services. And then uh, they'll uh, make automatically uh, error. And then it's uh, how to uh, deal with the four tolerance here. And also we're gonna add circuit breaking and try to make a uh, overall the, the services and then it automatically uh, fall back to existing uh, available application. In the end, uh, like I mentioned earlier, so we're gonna enable the single sign authentication here. So I'm not, uh, we don't have enough time to go through all the end of the workshop today, but just make sure this workshop will be available end of the day. So feel free to go through the workshop uh, whenever you have a time uh, by end of the day. Okay, so I'm gonna just give it a try. Uh, the application deploy, and then, so now you can see the side of the car is in jetty. And then here is the uh, virtual services, and then create the virtual service. Uh, it's already there. Okay, let me try to, let me try to delete, delete it, and then recreate. Okay, I just recreate virtual service. And then you can see actually catalog virtual services here. So boogie boogie gateway and then all services go to our Spring Boot application service name. And then when you go to catalog service here, uh, it takes some time to create a new one. Okay, give us a moment. Uh, oh yeah. Give some moment and I'd like to access that application. 
Okay, so I'm going to stop uh, the demonstrate workshop today and go back to our slide show and I'll wrap it up and uh, closing this workshop today. Okay, so here's a couple of few resources that you're going to be more interested in around uh, service mesh as well as OpenShift service mesh, uh, not just community Istio, but also productized OpenShift service mesh based on Istio. So here's a uh, downloadable ebook in the developerredhead.com. And then just you can download the free. And then this is a really great uh, ebook. I already read this uh, ebook a couple, uh, I mean, years ago. So, Interesting Istio Service, for, Service Mesh for Microsoft's application. And then I'm going to put on the chat this URL as well. Simon, can you put on the chat this URL just in case in the select chat? Yeah, already, already done, Daniel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we've got a link to another ebook on there as well. Around, awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Services. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that. And then here's the our the service mesh landing page. You can find the ebook and then a lot of a bunch of the uh, resources and a benefit and a why and how and then what kind of stuff. So the red head uh, short link URL and service mesh. You can find more detail uh, if you are interested in going into more uh, service mesh journey. For well, the last thing, as I mentioned earlier, so pin me URL, Daniel TV, and so feel free to subscribe my channel. There are a bunch of the uh, technical video and tutorial, not only Kubernetes, but also a lot of cloud native application deployment. Okay, that's it. And then I'm gonna give you some moment, uh, Simon and Stelios, any comment or, or feedback or any kind of lesson learned for today? Feel free to chime in. No, I mean, it was, a, it was a great session, Daniel. Thank you. And uh, thanks to everyone for attending. I do, do appreciate it. So, I mean, really, uh, 120 minutes is, 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 a long, uh, is a long time. And uh, thanks to, to, to all of you that uh, made it to the end. Um, hey, I just want to mention one thing. This is a little bit of a sneak peek for, for, for you folks that have made it to the end of the, the workshop here. Uh, just to let you know, we are working on a ebook um, that will be out probably in the next probably six to eight weeks. Uh, Stelios is co-authoring it, um, along with our uh, technical marketing manager. Uh, Ortwin and basically it's going to be a really good book um, it's, it's going to be free um, so, so watch this space uh, keep checking back on our, our web, web page there but it's going to be on day two operations for uh, for service mesh so uh, you know the intention of the book is to be um, very hands-on very practical uh, day to day um, with many sort of day-to-day -day examples in it that that you can keep print out or uh, you know have have on hand to help you with a lot of those day two day two uh, operations tasks um, with uh, you know implementing and maintaining and running a service mesh. So, um, but no, thanks again, everyone. Uh, I do appreciate it, and hand across to Stelios for any last words. Well, just uh, obviously thanks for to both of you for inviting me here, and. Uh, and as we, my co-presenter said, you know, you can always reach out to us if uh, there's further questions, uh, both on the um, Slack channel and even you know, the following space. We'll try to keep tabs on that so we can actually support any questions that you might still have. And uh, I hope you enjoyed all the demonstrations. Awesome. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the day. Still calm. Have a good rest of the day.